listen to what folks say beforehand, but it's like it's almost impossible not to. It's fascinating. It is so instructive as me as a teacher to hear what people are saying and all that. Um, and it's, I mean, is that good or bad? I mean, it's just, it just is. So I, I, and I always wonder if I were to show up in another class, would people be talking about my class? Like, oh, oh my God, yeah. That, why, why, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know, this in particular is a fun class, I, I, in, in my opinion. Um, I, I, there's, Probably other classes I teach that aren't so fun. Uh, hopefully they're still educational, but they, they might not be quite as fun. Uh, um, okay. What we're going to do is we're building on the theme of images and CSS. So this week, and again, I'm just going to kind of go with the flow. Um, we're going to, that, that's our two main topics, talking about images and talk about CSS. Um, as far as images go, we're going to talk a little bit about editing images. Not too much, because this isn't like a class in image manipulation. But in my mind, every web developer should know some very basic things about image editing. All right? Um, and we're going to talk about using images for background of, of things, like uh, background of a page um, and, and so on. Uh, we're going to continue talking about CSS, and again, typically my focus, the first uh, round of CSS, is to talk about colors because that usually that stands out. I mean, you can tell the impact. You know, you might not be able to tell Helvetica from um, Futura, all right, but you should be able to tell, um, you know, yellow from red, unless you're colorblind, all right. In which case. Um, you know, um, there's other things that we can do as well. But at any rate, let's, let's continue talking about colors and let's continue talking about CSS. I will probably talk about a couple of other things related to CSS beyond colors just to sort of give you um, a taste of, of um, how do I want to say this, a taste of the capacity of, of CSS. Um, because there's a lot of things the first four weeks of class that when people ask me questions, I say, ah, we handle that via CSS. And we can't do them all this week, but I want to at least talk about some of the kinds of things so that you're open to the possibilities and you can experiment. That's kind of my catchphrase for this semester, I think. It's like, we go to a lab, all right, after, after the lecture. The lab sh can be, and it should be, a place for you to experiment with the stuff that we've learned. So, yes, I know you want to get the assignments done. All right, obviously. But there's no reason why in order to get the assignments done, you can't play around with a few things first. You can't take, you know, maybe it would be easier for you to take one of my examples and play around with it uh, a bit, and then you'll be in a better position to get your assignments done. So I encourage you to experiment. You know, everyone I know that's good at this kind of thing um, has fun with it. All right, and, and plays around with it and would be doing it anyhow, you know, and, and loves talking about it, and loves trying out new things and so on. All right. Second thing we're going to do with CSS this week is we're going to put it in its own file. All right. What do you suppose the advantage of putting CSS in its own file would be? Pardon me? Now I mix it with HTML, yeah. It, well, yeah, that's one thing. It, it, it sort of separates it and makes it more clear, makes the, the HTML a little easier to read. All right, here's a tip. If you, wanna, if, you want to, if, you wanna, if you want me to think that you're smart, all right, in, in future classes, and, and this goes for every class I teach. So if you have me for another class, um, you know, you can use this too. I have a student that when he's done, He's getting, he's getting like two or three majors. He'll have had me for nine classes. They ought to give that guy a purple heart when he graduates too, besides his degree. But at any rate, if I ever ask a question, why do we do X? Just yell out the word maintainability. All right? Because that's the reason we do most of the things. Most of the things we do is to make it easier to change our code when we're done. All right? Because we know things are going to change. 
right? We know that something about the environment or there was a bug in the program or something we're going to change. You know, company A buys out company B. So all of a sudden they have to merge two websites together and change the color scheme. All right. Um, there's a new law concerning the, the shipping of chemicals, for example. All right. Um, I, I worked on a project years ago, and this is even pre-9-11, so this goes way back. Um, where it, it was a company that sold chemicals for laboratories, you know, scientific experiment, uh, experiments, um, but some of them obviously uh, are, are potentially hazardous. So there's all kinds of laws depending on the country that you're in about where you can ship where and this and that. And, and you can imagine, again, after 9-11, that is probably even, even much uh, more complex today. So countries change their laws. All right. All these things create an environment where software has to be changed. And software, whether you're talking about applications like in C Sharp or web pages or mobile applications or whatever, they have to be changed. I draw a graph in every one of my classes, and I'll put it up there real quickly, but I, I think it underscores the reason why being focused on maintainability is so important. The graph looks like this. No, it doesn't look like this. The graph looks like, this is what my lecture looked like. No, it doesn't. And have I shown any graphs this year? Because if I have, it would have been this one, all right? This is comparing the cost of changing software, making a change to software, as opposed to the stage of the project. Typically, and again, there's, there's whole different philosophies of the steps of, pro, uh, of, uh, of, of a process. But there's what's called the analysis phase, where you figure out what it is that needs to be done. There's the design phase, where you figure out how you're going to do that. There's the build phase, where you actually make what it is you're going to make. There's the testing phase, <clears throat> where you check to see if it worked. Then find the implementation phase where you actually put it out to the real world and if needed, make changes to it. <clears throat> well, the cost of change in software goes up the further along the process that you go. All right? And this is true from the first software that was written. All right? I mean, this isn't like a new thing. You know, it was true for the first programmers, and it's true now. The point of this graph is the later that you find a problem or the later that you have to make a change to your software, the more expensive it's going to be. And expensive in terms of, you know, they say time is money, so, so programmer hours, however you want to call that. So the other thing to notice about this graph is it's not a linear progression. It doesn't go up in a straight line. It's actually a geometric progression. It has a curve upwards. All right? Which means not only is it increasing, but it increases at an increasing rate. So it gets more and more. It gets steeper and steeper the, the more you go up. Now, the shape for maintaining programs, as near as anyone can foresee, will always look like this. All right? Think of it like if you're building a house. This analysis phase where you're figuring out what to do would be, you know, let's say you, you were a millionaire and you were having uh, someone design and build a house for you, specifically for you. The design phase is where you're sitting with the architect talking about how many bathrooms that you want and how big the indoor pool should be and those kinds of things. All right? The implementation maintenance uh, stage is when you're actually living in the house. Well, as you can imagine, if you decide to make a room four feet bigger when you're simply drawing it with the architect on the blueprints, it's pretty easy to move a wall four feet on a drawing. All right? Erase it, move it over, redraw it. When you're actually living in the house, to move a wall four feet is a big task. All right? It's much more 
costly, much more time intensive than it would be to change it. So if you're changing a plan, that's pretty easy. If you're changing a finished product, that's difficult. Now, what we can do is, if we adopt good practices, the curve's still going to have this shape, but we can flatten it out a bit. Maybe like that. All right? So almost anything I do that, says, that, that I say is a good programming practice, it is to increase maintainability, and it is to flatten out that curve. All right. So let's talk about putting our... CSS in its own file, and let's talk about how maintainability comes in. So we put a CSS in its own file. How does it make it easier to change when it's in its own file? Well, you can go grab whatever you need. It's isolated. You see it right there. There's another reason why it's easier to change if it's in its own file. How many pages are usually on a website? Yeah, I don't know, one, a bunch, right? Now, if the CSS is inside the HTML document, let's say there are 100 pages on the site. If the CSS is within the HTML of every web page, and there's 100 of them, how many web pages do we have to change? We have to change 100 of them. If I have 100 pages where I say background red inside it, and I want to make that to background green, I have to go into the individual HTML of 100 pages and make that change. If, however, I have separated it where I have 100 HTML pages, but they all point at the same CSS page, then if I want to change my entire website from red to green, I just need to change it in one place. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page, and I'm going to start for review by putting the CSS in the page itself. And then I'm going to clone the page maybe one or two times, all right, just for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to go pull the, the code out and put it in its own file, and we'll see the difference. So. Let's go in a notepad. And let's make the shell of our web page. Here we go. Any of you that have Professor Huffman, you will not have a quiz today. Let's make a website, again, not just one page, but a website for the Browns 2014 season. And we'll make a page for, for each game. All right? So. I'll make a page for the Steelers game. Actually, what should I probably put these link tags in? Probably put them in an unordered list. Or, I'm actually going to use an ordered list because the, the sequence is significant here, right? I mean, they played the Steelers before they played the Saints. 
It isn't that I decided to put the Steelers on top of the list. It's that they actually physically played them first. So I'm going to put it in an ordered list. Notice again, I'm, I'm arranging the white space in a way that I think is most readable. I'm projecting this on the screen, so I want to make sure the font is big. And um, I have the, the, the ability to, you know, arrange it however I want to. So I'll make a, game, a page for the... And the Ravens next week, correct? If it's not, we're going to pretend it is. I'm going to make a home page and I'm going to make three pages. Now, I'm also going to do something where I'm going to put, actually this in a nav section instead of an article. I'm going to put a header, or heading, or header rather. I apologize. Thank you. I'm doing this pretty quick because this should be largely review. But again, if you have questions, please shout them out. I'm going to create a home page for this, which is going to be this page to start. And I'm going to copy that for every one of these. So even though I'm, I'm going to create a link, this page back to itself. So we'll see what that will do. And then I'll have an article, or actually I'll put in a head section. Use this page to follow the Browns in their drive to the Super Bowl. See, you win one game and you, you know you start getting crazy optimistic. All right, so let's look at this. Whoops. Let's go and save it. I'm going to save it as index.html. Later on in the semester, we'll probably talk a little bit about web servers, but index.html is a very common default name for a site's home page. There's a couple of typical ones, and index.html is one. So it's sort of a good practice to call like the home page index.html. So I'm going to go and go save this on the desktop. <coughs> I'm going to view it. I thought I saved it on a desktop. Oh, I saved it in documents. Let's go and save it again on the desktop. I think I saved it as the wrong kind of file anyhow. Index.html. And here we go. We have Use this page to follow the Browns in their drive to the Super Bowl. We have a link to the home page, which is simply back to itself. All right. And that doesn't really make any sense on this page, but I want, I'm going to want to keep my navigation constant. So when I clone this, I'm going to clone this three times. I'm going to make a copy for the Steelers. I'm going to make a copy for the Ravens and a copy for 
the saints, and then I'll customize each of that page. So we'll have a, a little, um, a little, um, little website going here. All right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to clone this three times. And by cloning it, I'm, I mean I'm simply going to copy it and paste it. Do that three times, and then I'm going to rename it. Now, one thing I should have done, I did Ravens twice. I had both of them selected. All right. One thing I should be doing, which I haven't done yet, is I'm going to go and I'm going to turn the file extensions on. Because I want to make sure I've actually called them .html. And if we, get, if we get using images here, we're going to need to know these. So, there we are, index, dealers, saints, ravens. I'm going to go in and just make a little change to each of these. So there's the Steelers one. Here's the Saints one. And then finally, let's make the Ravens one. So we'll see that there's three distinct pages here. All right. So I'll save these three, and let's just look to see what we have. So we have our home page. I can click on the Steelers and see that. I can click on the Saints and see that. I can click on the Ravens and see that. Or I can click Home and see that. So the idea here is if you, make, if you need to make a five-page website, it isn't as much work as making five page, you know, one page times five. Right? You can make a shell of a web page, which is essentially what I did with the things that are to stay constant, you know, the heading, the navigation, and all that, and then you fill in what's different between each page. If you go to almost any site, you'll see a good portion of the site stays the same. A good portion of each page stays the same or roughly the same. And then there's a content area that changes. So if like, you go to Amazon or CNN or any site like that, you'll see there's a constant navigation, there might be a constant set of things on the side, and then there's a, a, an area that changes from page to page. So that's the good news, and that's the method that we're going to use. We're going we're to make a template, and we're going to clone it. All right, now in the CSS. Let me correct this. I had a typo in this, I noticed, and it's going to bug me. 
All right, now let's go into CSS on the home page. Now, hmm, what would be a good color scheme for this site? Yeah, orange and brown. All right. Now, I could guess what color orange is, but I'm going to go to the color chart. All right, and this, the way this one works is you click on the color you want and it shows you what the code is for that. So, this shade of orange is pound sign FF8000. So let's copy that. She's surprised by that. So, I'm going to make... Now, should I make the background of the page orange? I don't know, that might be a bit of overkill. All right. Remember that with color, sometimes a subtle approach is better. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not necessarily going to make the whole page orange. I'm going to keep the page white, but I'm going to make the header section have a background of orange. So how would I do that? First of all, I need my style tag to tell the browser, hey, Everything between the start and end style tag is, we're out of HTML land and we're into CSS. So how would I make the background color of the header be orange? Yep. First of all, again, all CSS rules start with a selector. The selector tells what gets this rule. To what does this rule apply? And the only kind of selector that we've talked about in class so far, and there's a couple others, but the kind that we talked about is a selector based on an HTML tag. So if I say header, it means everything in the header is going to get this style rule. And I can say background of orange. I can, or actually, pound sign FF8000. So now let's go and look at it. Oops. I did the wrong page. No, I didn't. Did I save it? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I saved it either. Background. Let's save it. And refresh. Ah. This brings up an interesting point that I don't want to talk about this, this moment. The pre but, but we'll come back to towards the end of either today or next time. This didn't work because of the version of Internet Explorer we're using. All right, so this is our first live example of a browser compatibility issue. All right, let's open this guy in Chrome instead. We'll talk more about browser compatibility issues again, and we'll talk about how we can address this issue later on. But let me go in and open this with Google Chrome. And there we see it's orange. So this shows us right off the bat, you know, you can run into browser compatibility issues where it looks one way in one browser, one way in another. Each browser is a program that is geared towards displaying web pages. Well, each one is written with different code and each one can have its own problems or bugs or limitations and this is a limitation. Now, if I was doing this for real, I'd have to ask myself, how important was that? How important is if someone viewing it with this version of Internet Explorer sees an all-white page as opposed to white and orange? And if I thought it was important, I would have to figure out some workaround for it. And we'll talk more about that later. But for the rest of the day, we're going we're gonna to stick, we're going to take the easy approach, and we're going to stick by just viewing it in Chrome, where I know there's no browser compatibility issue. All right? 
How would I make the text white, let's say? Yeah, in the header, so color. And I could say either pound sign F, 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 or I can say pound sign white. What if I wanted that orange to be a darker orange? What might I change this to? Darker means a higher number or a lower number? It means a lower number. So instead of F, maybe I'll do D. Instead of an 8, maybe I'll do a 6. There is a more subdued kind of orange. Um, again, or I could simply go and pick it off the chart, right, and look for a different shade. But I do want to reinforce how that looks. So now, that's how that looks. All right. Now, now, yeah, go ahead. So just like the was saying there, color? Color? It knows that Yeah, color means the color of the text. And background means the color of the background, right? But yeah, when you just see color, that, that that's like the font color. It doesn't say it, but yeah, you're you're right. Now that's on all three pages, No, because I've only put it on the index.html, right? I've only made that change right here. All right. So if I go to the Steeler page, still the old colors: Saints, Ravens. Home page, I'm back to it. Now, let's say I wanted to put that on all three pages. Well, what would I have to do? Well, to put it on the Steelers page, I'd have to copy this, open up the Steelers page, and paste that in. All right. Now, I open that up. Not in Internet Explorer. I open up in Chrome. I got my orange. I click on the Steelers. I got my orange. Click on the Saints and Ravens, and it's still the old color. Now, what if I look at that again and say, you know what, I, I want the brighter orange back. That, that's a little bit too dark. Well, how many pages am I, am I going to have to change? Two now. Now I only did two, but imagine I did the full 16 schedule. That would be 16 plus the, um, the home page plus the three or four games for the playoffs. I would say I'm glad someone appreciated that that might have been a joke. All right. But I can go in here and if I say, all right, I want the brighter orange back, I'd have to go here and change it. And then I'd have to go here and change it. And I'd have to go into all the other pages as well, which I haven't done, but if I was doing a complete website and I did it this way, I'd have to go back and do all those. Now keep in mind, that's just one thing I'm talking about changing, right? I mean, I might have a whole bunch of properties when we see all the capability of CSS. I may have a whole bunch of properties um, that um, requ might require changing. I might decide to change the font or the width of things or whatever. All right. So, we should realize pretty quickly that that is no fun. All right. One thing that people developing software and web pages hate to do is to do the same job over and over again. It's just, I mean, that's why I, I think, you know, most of us went into computers is because we got better things to do than to go and repeat the same line of code 17 times, right? We got, you know, we got TV shows to watch and video games to play and, Mostly. pardon me? Mostly for the money. Mostly for the money? Okay. All right, and those are good, good reasons too. 
But in, in programming, there's something called an inspired laziness, I would say. And I made that up. So if you hear anyone else doing it, tell them that, that, that they're violating my trademark. <laughs> inspired laziness is where you think a little bit about what you're going to do and figure out a way to make your life easier later on. And this is almost an example of, what's, what was that, what's that fable? The, what, where the one, maybe it's a squirrel runs around <laughs> gathering nuts and the other animal is out partying and then the winter comes and the other animal's starving and then the squirrel is getting fat, eating the nuts that he's stored. There, there's a fairy tale like that. I know there is, all right? And, and again, I'm probably butchering it. But the idea is, is you spend a little bit of time working up front you make your life easier later. Why? Because of that, among other reasons. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little more work now. I'm going to make a separate file. I'm going to go into Notepad. And I'm going to make a file. And I'm going to put in there my CSS code. Now, because it's in a separate file, I don't need the style tag. All right? The style tag says, hey, you're in an HTML document, but this little section is, is CSS land. But what I can do is I can go in and say header. Look for the curly bracket. Background. pound sign FF8000, color white. Now, if I had done this in advance, I would have put in all those web pages. I would have put in the template and all the clones. I'd have a link to this. But I wanted to demonstrate doing it the long way, and now I want to show you the short way. So. A website can potentially have a bunch of different style sheets. I'm going to go in just like I did with the web, with the web pages, and I'm going to call this style.css. I'm going to save it. Now, notice again, I guess that little icon indicating that the operating system knows that this is CSS. A website could have a bunch of different style sheets for a lot of different reasons. The simple examples we're going to go over, to, at least to start, is only going to have one style sheet for every page on the site. And that's a good thing, right? We want our pages to be consistent, right? We don't want our pages to look as though they're pages from different sites and confuse the user. We want a consistent color scheme. We want a consistent layout. Now, on occasion, there might be one page that looks a little different. Or we might want our site to look different in a mobile browser than on a desktop browser. But for the most part, consistency is something that's valued and is very important. So we're going to start by just having one style sheet. I have to point my web pages to that style sheet. I have to tell my web page, hey, Here's where you find the style code. And you do that via a link tag. Now, not an A tag, all right? An A is for like a link to another page. I'm going to remove this code and I'm going to put in here <coughs> a link tag. And the link tag has several attributes. The first two are always the same. Type text equals CSS, uh, text slash CSS. REL equals style sheet. And then finally, href, where I put in the file name that contains my CSS code. Now, this is in the same folder, so. I simply just put style.css. Now I save this and view my page. 
and it still has it. The difference is, is the code's in one place. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to put this on all my pages. Now had I had some foresight here, I would have did this when I created it initially. But I'll go and put it in the Steelers page. I'll replace the style tag with this link tag. And I'll do it on the Saints and I'll do it on the Ravens. Again, future examples, if we do something like this, we'll put the style sheet right in the template the first time so we won't have to go and add it in after the fact. So now if we go and look at this, all our pages have the same color scheme. And if that's not enough for you, sometimes I feel like I'm like doing like an infomercial, you know. How much would you pay for this? You'd pay many thousands of dollars, right? Well, you get this all for free, but wait, there's more, all right? If I go and change this. Let's say, for example, and again, it's probably a dumb example, but let's say the Browns change their color scheme not to be orange, but to be red. Someone gets the notion that orange is an unlucky color. So instead of orange and brown, we'll make it red and brown. All right? Well, why not? It could happen. So now I go and I change it in the one style sheet. Nothing on my sleeves, I've not touched the other pages. Yet, when we view them, that one's red, that one's red, that one's red, and that one's red. So any change I make to one page gets reflected in all the pages. All right. Well, a week later they say, hey, that's a dumb idea, so let's go and change it back. Thank you. And we're back. So what have we done? We've cut that curve down. No longer is a lot more expensive. It's just a little more time to do that. Now, There's a lot of other things we can do with CSS as well. One thing that a lot of people complain about um, when they do this is the fact that that header tag goes all the way across the page. They think that looks ugly. And it does kind of look ugly. All right? We could make it so it doesn't go all the way across the page. All right? And we can do that fairly simply. We can put a width on the header tag. And I'm going to put a width of 60%. Now, I'm just going to pick some random things to change about this. All right? We'll cover all these in more detail later. But the width is one thing that you can change. And you can put the width as a percentage if you want. There's other ways to do it as well. But we can do it as a percentage. So now when we do this, It only goes part way across the screen, 60%. And in fact, as we make this bigger and smaller, that gets bigger or smaller. All right. Let's play around some more. I don't like the fact that this comes right up to the edge. There's, there's nothing between the letter and the edge. The attribute that controls that is called padding. So I can say padding, and I can say 10 pixels. A pixel is like a dot on the screen. So I'm putting 10 dots between the edge of the, the orange and where the text begins. And I'm going to save that. 
And now notice that there's some space between it. And there's space on every page. So notice I'm keeping it consistent. Yes. Uh -huh. Excellent question. There's a couple ways to do that. The simplest way to do that would be this. I'm going to copy this for the nav. Then I'm going to say margin zero pixels auto. And that's what's going to center my text. Now we'll talk about this in much more detail later because there's subtle differences between the padding and the margin. They all sort of sound like the same thing. It's, it's like extra space, but there's, there's a difference in purpose. But if you say a margin of zero pixels auto, that will center whatever you're talking about within its container. All right? And in this case, what, does, what contains the header? Well, the body of the page, the HTML page. So if we do this now, we'll have this. All right? Notice we're slowly nudging into our pages which were just very simple and straightforward and basic to starting to look like, at least nudging in the direction of a real looking web page. And there's other things we can do too. For example, maybe I want H1s to be actually the color brown. We haven't worked any brown into this page. So I could say H1 background brown. And if I wanted a specific shade of brown, I could fiddle around with one of those um, color wheels. Kind of a weird shade of brown, but we'll go with it. All right. I, I, I think part of it is the fact that the way it is sitting on an orange background is a little bit, is giving it a reddish sort of cast. Um, I'll bet if we got rid of that orange, which we can do, right? What color is that going to be? White. Or not. Sometimes, too, things when they're projected look a little different than what I'm seeing them on the monitor. Yes? I have a question about editing. Mm hmm? I know there are web pages that always say the same, especially with more local companies. Uh huh. Like the name of the company, their name. Uh huh. I think there are ones that constantly change. Okay. Always yes. Right, 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 right. Okay, that's a great question. The question was is that some web pages um, never change. Like let's say, for example, a restaurant. All right, a restaurant, they're going to have their hours, they're going to have their location, they're going to have what's on their menu, and, and, and that's about it. And that might change, but it doesn't change too often. Certainly doesn't change, you know, every day, you know, maybe every six months they revise their menu. All right? Pages that don't change or that require human to go and change the HTML are called static web pages. That's what we're doing right now. We're doing, we're creating what's called a static web page. In other words, if I close this down, I go away and I come back tomorrow, this page is going to look the same as it did today. The kind of page that you're talking about with CNN or Amazon or eBay or any of those, those are called dynamic pages. Yeah, especially the news, right. The news is something that would change, you know, hourly. You look at CNN now and you look an hour from now and it's going to be different. 
does that mean that there's someone sitting in coding HTML 24-7? No. Pages like that are actually generated from a database. All right? There's still HTML, but it's HTML that is created by a program. Now, I know some of you are in a C-sharp class. So one way that this can be done is with ASP.NET pages, where you write C-sharp code linked to web pages that go and do some processing, pull it out to the database, and put it in. So, if there's like a top story on CNN, and all someone would have to do at CNN is enter that story, or that story would get put in. You know, the writer would write it and publish it. The program then would pull it and pop it on the web page the next time someone asks for that web page. We'll talk more about this later on, but that's a great observation. All right. Now, you might say, well, if we're going to write a program to do it, we're going to do it with C Sharp and, and, and ASP.NET, why would we learn HTML? Well, when the day is done, web pages consume HTML. We have to give web pages HTML. Whether we write it all ourselves in the case of a static page, or we write a program that writes the web page, we're still producing HTML. So we better, need, we better know how that works. All right. But yeah, it's an excellent question. Essentially, there's, there's code that actually creates the web page on the fly. Think of Amazon, right? Amazon, how many products does Amazon sell? Couldn't even put a number on it, right? I mean, people say millions when they mean a dozen sometimes, but this would actually be in the millions of products that they sell. Does that mean that there's a web developer writing a million different pages? No. There's web developers that write and perfect one page that pulls the data from a database and creates a million versions of that one page. All right? Sort of like when you go into Subway versus McDonald's. All right? You go into McDonald's and order a Big Mac, boom, that Big Mac's sitting there, is ready for you, and they give it to you. They don't do anything. They're just sitting there waiting to be delivered. Whereas if you go into Subway, they make it for you based on what you tell them. So it's dynamic. And your um, turkey club might be different than my turkey club because I'll pick different kind of bread and cheese and all that. Just like you view your page in Angel, I view the same page logged in as me, it's going to look different. Why? Because it's not a static HTML page. It's, a, it's an HTML page that was created by a program that looks in the database and says, you're a student, I'm the instructor of this class, I teach different classes, you're enrolled in different classes, so you see a different list of classes than me. I can do more things in this class than you can. You can't grade the stuff, whereas I can. Why is that? Again, still the same page, quote, but it was a page that's created just for you using the parameters in the database and programming to dynamically create it just for you. All right? Great, great question. All right, we'll continue with this next time. You okay, Ridgedale? All right. Oh, can I see your shirt a little closer? Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that just like old school video? Yes, yeah, it has like one for each letter.